up everybody this is Big T Davis from Bubba Bass Anglers I'm making this video because I wanted to give a shout out to all of our supporters and say thank you uh, we finally reached 700 subscribers <laughs> which is amazing considering we started this channel what two years ago three years ago um, just to give you some backstory on me and Bubba and Ed so Ed's like a whole generation younger than us uh, you know so I may have told this story before, I'm going to just say it real quick, so, like, when we were, like, young kids, we used to fish with bobbers and worms and catch uh, perch and, and bluegill and sunfish all day. We couldn't figure out how all those dudes on TV were catching bass, like, you know, Bill Dance and, and Jimmy Houston. Those are the shows we used to watch when we were coming up, and these guys used to pulling bass after bass after bass, and we didn't know what the hell they were doing. We'd go out with our bobber and our little ugly stick and our four pound tests with our little our little eagle claw hooks and put worms on them and catch sunfish and perch. Uh, occasionally we'd put treble hooks on it and, and, and snag herring. Or if we were crazy enough, we'd put corn or bread on the line and, and one time we pulled uh, caught a carp while we were on top of a bridge and I had to uh, have Bub run down to the shore and and slowly drop the rod down to him so we could pull this carp in because it was too heavy. It would have broke all our stuff. But anyway, uh, then I moved to California. So I was in California for 20 years. And prior to moving to California, I had only caught one bass. I caught one bass on a crankbait called a Big O because we used to watch this guy uh, fishing in the river and he's, he'd lie to us and say he caught like 50 bass in the morning. And we believed him. And we asked him what he used. He said, I used a Big O. So we buy big O's and I caught my first bass on, on a tiny big O up at the falls and it was the most amazing thing. It was a little dink bass, like a, like a pound, but it was my first largemouth bass. And I loved fishing, but being in Massachusetts, uh, not like I was in Texas or someplace like that, it was cool. It was something we did once in a while. But we were playing basketball, we were playing video games and planning our life and then I moved to California to go to school. So, imagine me living in California, Southern California, San Diego for 20 years and not take advantage, taking advantage of the fishing opportunities there. I think I only fished twice when I was in California. One time I caught a catfish and, and then it broke off the line. It did, anyway, uh, so you know, it was like, yeah, I love fishing, but it's not my thing. I have video games, basketball, you know, uh, plus I'm a photographer, I'm in the tech, yeah. I've, I've published video game magazine, uh, video game websites. I've did like three video game websites. Uh, I've done tech reviews. I've been to the Consumer Electronics Show, E3, all that. So that's what I was really into at the time. But in the back of my head, it's like, I really love fishing. So the only bass fishing I was exposed to all those years was Bill Dance, Jimmy Houston, Kevin Van Dam, you know, a lot of the old schoolers. Sometimes you'd catch it on ESPN or whatever, whatever. So... I moved back to Boston in 2008, and Ed, who was a baby when I had left, is now this full-grown man, and he's an avid bass fisherman. And we're like, oh, me and Bub used to fish. Now, Ed is Bub's cousin. Bub's my best friend. So, uh, you know, and, and Ed's father had taken me and Bub saltwater fishing one time. We didn't catch anything, but he had his own boat. He was in the fishing, too. Anyway, so Ed's like, Ed would, yeah, we should go fishing sometime. I'm like, yeah, me and Bub used to fish. And we'd go fishing with Bub. I bought an ugly stick, because <laughs> that's all I knew at the time. All you need is an ugly stick, a two-piece ugly stick, and like a Zebco reel or something. I ended up getting the Shimano 2500FX for like $30 on, on Amazon. It's plastic reel, but it's a great reel. And we'd go and we'd fish. And Ed would catch a bass, and me and Bub wouldn't catch anything, you know. And then we'd come home like, ah, oh, Ed, you know, fishing in Massachusetts sucks. And then we'd be watching the football game or something, and Ed would text us these pictures of these bass he was catching. We're like, how are you catching these bass? Where are you catching bass? This is just like four years ago, right? So we're like, so we'd go fishing with him somewhere again, and we wouldn't catch anything, and Ed would catch a bass. He was always the one catching the fish. And we're like, man, we used to fish all the time. We should we should be good at this. But we didn't know what we were doing as far as bass fishing. 
So Ed's like, you know, we should go to Quabbin. Quabbin Reservoir. It's really good bass there, and you can rent a boat. And we're like, oh, we've never really fished fresh water from a boat. Huh. Maybe we should do that. So, okay, so we go. We drive all the way up to Quabbin. It's like a 90-minute drive. And we rent these little 12-foot boats, these dinghy boats, these skiffs. And we load up with tackle we had. And I had a big O. That's what we knew. So I had a big O. Bub had a big O. Ed had a full bag full of different tackles. So we're like, whatever, Ed. So we're out in the boat. And the water's beautiful. It's just, the first thing we notice is like, wow, this is just absolutely, this is the great outdoors. We're hearing loons in the distance and all kinds of weird animals. And it's quiet and calm. It's just absolutely it's the most beautiful scene I had ever seen in my life. Casting out my big O. I'm railing it. And, you know, I'm not really expecting to catch anything because, you know, we never catch anything. And Ed's the one that's always catching everything. And something nabbed my big O. And I started reeling. And it's pulling drag because my drag was too loose. And I didn't know what the hell I was doing. And I'm like, what is this? What? And I'm sitting at the time, because we were sitting in the boat. We weren't standing because those boats weren't very stable. So the fish gets close to the boat, and it kind of breaches the water a little bit, and everybody sees it's this huge smallmouth bass. We're like, oh, my God, oh, my God, right? And it's the first time I had ever hooked a smallmouth bass. And it pulls so hard, and I'm sitting on the boat, that it pulls my rod because it's trying to get under the boat. My rod's in the water. I'm holding the rod, but it's bent in the water. I couldn't believe the strength of this fish. I'm like, what the hell is going on? So I pull it up, and he gets off the line. I lose him. I'm like, oh, my God. And the adrenaline was flowing. I was like, Bub, this is incredible. I said, I never hooked a fish like this before. Smallmouth bass are beasts. What's going on here? And we're all tripping up, and my hands are shaking, and I'm just like, for the next half hour, I was just like on a, on some kind of a high. I was on cloud 10. I couldn't believe what I just experienced, and, and Bub watched it, and he couldn't believe it. He, he didn't even feel it, but he watched it and couldn't believe it. So we're like all amped up. So Ed, because he's not catching any fish, he decides to throw a crankbait on, and he catches a perch on a crankbait. So then we move, and we go to another spot, and I see, I don't know anything about laydowns or anything like this, but I see a laydown in the water. I'm like, let me just cast past the laydown in front of it. So I cast past the laydown in front of it. Bam! I get slammed again. I'm reeling it in, reeling it in, reeling it in. It's another smallmouth bass. It's giving me a fight. I'm like, I'm not losing this one. And I lift that bass up into the boat. It was my first smallmouth bass ever. This was a Quabbin Reservoir. It was only like a two-pounder maybe two and a half pounds if you look at my my avatar it's the one i'm holding in the picture it's probably just two pounds we didn't have a scale actually we did have a scale and we tried to weigh it and it, it flopped off the scale if you go back to the early bubba bass anglers videos if you go all the way back to the beginning that video was there because i had the wherewithal to say hey let's bring a gopro and record some of this stuff so, it may not even been my GoPro. It may have just been my camera, my hand, my phone. But I figured if we're going to be out there, we should record some of this footage. You know, might, something might happen. So, I, I have that fish on video. And it was the very first Bubba Bass Anglers video. And I posted it on my other channel because there was no Bubba Bass Anglers. So, I was just like, oh, that's cool. Let me upload this on YouTube. So, I uploaded it on YouTube. I think that day... Ed caught a bunch of fish that day. But anyway, so the day was over. We went home, and all of a sudden, me and Bub, and I don't think Bub, Bub got skunked that day. I think me and Bub were addicted to fishing instantly. Ed was already there. He knew. Ed was already there. He was already addicted to fishing. He had been doing it longer than us. He was already there. So he was experiencing with us what he had already experienced before earlier in his life. Because he had already been catching bass. So I'm like, so we, we got in the car. And I think that day, I don't know if we stopped to get some food or whatever. And I said, we need to come here every single weekend until winter. We just need to do it. Because that was amazing. So 
we started going back every weekend we get in the car we drive 90 minutes up 90 minutes back we pay $45 to rent the boat and five dollars to park and we fish and every day we got better and better with fishing and not only did we get better but we got more addicted and I'm thinking to myself and Bub caught his first bass and all this stuff and Ed's Ed's out fishing us and we don't know how so there's another video called the day of the Cinco this is what we learned about Cinco's now Ed was talking about Cinco's but you know we all we knew was that we both had ugly stick GX2's we both had big O's and we had rubber worms maybe and I think at the time we got some hollow body frogs because we watched some, some videos or whatever maybe an Ish Monroe video or whatever that Ed was catching all these fish with Cinco's and I had listened to what Ed said earlier and bought a pack of Cinco's and I was using them and I was catching fish. And Bubba was like, what are you all catching fish on? I'm catching fish on Cinco's. They really work. It's like the first rubber worm that's ever really worked for me for catching the bass. So I'm like, you know what? I Because I'm already a photographer and a filmmaker. I said, we should just make this. We should, do, we should keep doing videos. So I kept doing videos. And I think it was on that day Bub had a big O and he cast out and he hooked a bass, a largemouth bass, and the bass breached the water. It had to have been at least three or four pounds. It was the biggest bass we'd seen in our life. Ed, of course, has already seen that stuff. Me and Bub, we ain't ever seen none of that except on TV, on Jimmy Houston and Bill Dance. And when the bass breached the water, you remember Field and Stream magazine, how they used to have those covers where they'd have the bass coming up out of the water? It was straight out of film stream. None of us could believe what we were seeing. Oh my God, it's a huge bass, get it in. So he's reeling and reeling and reeling. And at the time, we didn't know, actually we didn't know about hook setting. And when we hooked something with a crankbait, we would just pull the rod up. So he's pulling the rod up, reeling, and the bass shakes the lure out of his mouth. And we were like so dejected, but so excited at the same time. And we're sitting there talking and we're trying to fish, and Ed's like, now Bubba is the one who hooked the bass. And Ed said, I want to catch a Bubba bass. And I was like, I do too. We want that bass that Bubba had, a Bubba bass. Bubba bass, meaning the bass that Bubba had was a big, huge bass. So that's how we coined the term Bubba bass, Bubba bass anglers. Bubba bass anglers, we're going after Bubba bass. We're going after the big bass. If it was me who hooked the fish, we probably would have been called Big T Bass Banglers, <laughs> Bass Anglers, or, or Ed Bass. But it just worked out that Bubba hooked that fish. I'm like, yeah, I want a Bubba Bass. I want, I want what he had. So then we uh, changed the name of the channel to Bubba Bass Anglers. And then it began. So for the past three years, we've been uploading videos and... I, I'm, 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 I'm like, I can't stop thinking about fishing every day. That's all I think about is fishing, fishing, fishing nonstop. And I'm thinking to myself, this is the healthiest addiction ever. It's like a healthy, natural addiction to love the great outdoors. And then I started getting it because I was never this guy. I don't want to go camping, blah, blah, blah. I need the city, this and that. I want to be out in the, in the wilderness on a lake. That's where I want to be. I don't care about the city life anymore. I love it. I want to fish every single day of the week. I'm hooked. I'm addicted. I can't stop thinking about it. So over the past three years, we learned how to uh, hook, how to do a hook set. And when you're using a crankbait, how you wind up on the fish instead of set the hook. So you don't lose the bass. Never pull it up straight. You pull it sideways and wind up. I've learned so much. I've learned how to finesse fish. I learned how to use Cinco's. I used to hate bait casters. Now I love them. I learned how to use bait casters. We're learning how to find fish. We got our own boat. We, we learned the fish finder. We be, we're becoming experts. We're, we're learning more and more every year. At the beginning of 2017, I wasn't really that proficient with bait casting. I didn't know how to skip a jig. You know? By the end of 2017, I'm proficient with bait casters. I'm confident. I remember I got a backlash, the worst backlash ever on a bait caster, and I had 50 pound braid, and I didn't understand really how to get the backlash out, so I was pulling on the line. I tightened that braid so hard 
that the only way I could get the backlash out is to cut off like 75 uh, yards of, of break. Now, I know how to get, I'm not, I'm not afraid of a backlash because I know how to get a back, backlash out of my life. I know how to get it out and then just continue to fish. I'm becoming better. Every day it's like you're learning something new and you get better. We're better at finding fish. We know where to look. We know how fish are. We know how they go deeper when it gets hotter. We know how they look for cover. You know, we, we know how to use our fish. It's just, you're constantly learning. It's just a great addiction. It's some, This is an addiction that everybody should have. So now I understand why people go mountain climbing and hiking and deer hunting and things like that. I get it now. There's nothing better than the great outdoors. If you think about it, if all the electronics were to go away, the internet was to go away, you know, we'd still have the great outdoors. We'd still have fish. You know, it's so basic and so simple. It's some line, a rod and reel, a hook, and a lure. And you're out there with Mother Nature, catching the creations of God. You know, it's just, it's a beautiful thing. So, I'm, I'm totally hooked in it. And, you know, I got the channel going. Because of my past with doing uh, tech reviews and video game reviews, I, I started using those skills to procure products. So I got hooked up with Plano and Trapper Tackle. They send me free product, I review it. And then I got hip to NPS, National Pro Staff, and learned about being a pro staffer for certain brands. Whereas you get huge discounts on products or sometimes you get free products. Uh, we got away from Ugly Stick the day that we went to Carrot Stick's booth at the show and felt the the carrot stick rod and how light it was and how we decided oh we don't need two piece rods we need one piece rods they're better you know two piece rods are for travel There's so many things have changed but I got hooked up with all these different companies and uh, I met a bunch of different people and I got some sponsors it's great if you want to get sponsors go to nationalprostaff.com create an account and they have all kinds of sponsorship opportunities you can be a pro staff member you get discounts uh, all kinds of stuff so, here we are, it's 2018, it's new, it's new Year, I was planning on doing a best of 2018, but, you know, I, I don't want to do a best of 2018, I mean best of 2017, uh, I did it last year because we had a lot of funny moments, we had a lot of funny moments this year, but I think I'm going to pretty much just do a year in review instead, and I'm going to start the clips and let them roll through. I have, the, the, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, Skunk Fest. So from like the middle of October all the way through December, we went fishing several times and didn't catch anything. And I, I would start an intro every time we went out and then we wouldn't catch anything. So I didn't have a video to post. So I think we have like four or five trips where we went out, we didn't catch anything. It was kind of funny. I also, uh, once again, want to thank all of our subscribers. We're at 700. Um, by the end of the 2018, I'd like to be at 2,000 subscribers. But it's important to note that I have something special planned when we get to 1,000 subscribers. So uh, if you're watching and you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. Uh, what I have planned will benefit you as a subscriber. I'm not going to tell you what it is now, but I decided that I'll do it when we get to 1,000 subscribers. So thanks, everybody. thanks to everybody that's there. And if you're watching, you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. We've got some cool things coming up. Every year it's going to be bigger for us. Uh, 2018 is going to be bigger than 2017. Uh, we're going to go more places. We all got saltwater fishing license now. So we're going to be doing some striper videos this year. And we're also going to be doing some fishing in New Hampshire as well as Massachusetts. So that'll be exciting. And... If you don't know, all our videos are now in 4 They've been in 4K since, I think, the beginning of 2017. Uh, all the videos I post are in 4K. Uh, some of it's native 4K. Some of it's up 4K. But it's all 4K. So if you have a big screen, a 4K TV that you're watching Bubba Bass Anglers on, it probably looks pretty damn good. Um, between now and the start of the season... I'm going to be doing a lot of uh, retail therapy videos. We are going to the New England out, uh, Fishing and Outdoors Expo at the end of this month. 
and I will be attending iCast in July. So I will be pretty much going to every single booth I can at iCast to get info and contacts and show, show you guys all the new lores and rods and reels that are going to be out there. So on to the videos. First set of videos is going to be uh, Skunk Fest, all our skunk videos. And then I'm just going to do a montage of some of our uh, best moments of 2017. I will see you guys on the next video. Tight lines. Peace out. This is Tarrant Davis above Bass Anglers. Today we're out at Spy Pond in Arlington. I think I see a river rat. Is that a river rat over there? See him? Bet you it is. Looks like it. Sorry, I get easily distracted when I see wildlife. Definitely a river rat. Anyway, um, it is deep, deep, deep fall right now. Like we're in, we're in it. It's October, and I'm still looking to get my personal best. And there's bait fish all over. You look, see him? Is it? Yeah. Uh, anyway, sorry, I got distracted again. Uh, I'm looking to catch my personal best today. I'm gonna be jigging, cranking. Weighted Cinco. I'm gonna see what's gonna happen. There's a pike out there waiting for me. Um, anyway, uh, let's see what happens. Starting stays above bass anglers. You're probably wondering, when y'all posted video last week? Well, last week we got what, bub? Skunked it. Okay. And when you get skunked, you don't post skunk vids. Who wants to watch a skunk vid? You know, so here we are. We're at the Mystic River. We haven't fished the Mystic River in the boat since last season. So we're hoping we can catch one of them giant big berth of smallies that are in here. Who knows? Check out the video. Starring Stavis above Bass Anglers. Last couple weeks have been pure shit. Even though I caught a couple dinks last week, it was just horrible. You know when you got skunk days, you really can't post those videos. Like, who posts skunk videos unless somebody falls in the water or something? Last week, Bub slipped as he got in the boat and broke one of my rods. That would have been some great TV, but I didn't record it. Anyway, we're back at the Charles again. And uh, it's supposed to rain today. So we're already pissed off. So we're trying to get as much fishing as we can in the next couple hours. Hopefully it won't be too bad. Maybe we can hide under a bridge and eat some sandwiches. Anyway, check out the video. Peace. This is Torrance Davis with Bubba Bass Anglers. Today I'm doing some trout fishing at Walden Pond. Uh, and I, if I catch some, I'm going to do a catch and cook. And after I get my creel, then I'm going to try and catch some bass to see if that fall, fall weather bite is on. I'm alone today. But Bub might show up after work. Check it out. This is Bub Bass Anglers. Week six of skunkiness, <laughs> roughly. We're back at the Charles. We only got a couple hours. I think we figured out the fall pattern. So we're gonna try it here and see if we can get anything uh, in this next hour, 90 minutes, however much time we got before it gets dark. Peace. This is Torrance Davis from Bubba Bass Anglers, and I'm in Arizona. Um, Arizona's an amazing place for, for fishing. I guess they stock trout a couple times a year, they stock catfish, and they got fishing holes everywhere. So right now, where, what's this place called? Papago Park. Papago Park, I'm here with Ruben, longtime fan, my video game podcast. You guys didn't know I did that, did you? I have a video game podcast. <laughs> I've known Ruben through the podcast for years and found out he was a fisherman too. So figured while I was here, we check it out. So he took me to this nice fishing hole and they got bass and catfish and everything in here. And you know, I'm gonna try to catch a bass cause I've been getting skunked for the last month. So it's time to pull in a couple bass while I'm here. We only got a couple hours to fish. So let's see what I can get. So this tiny little ecosystem here 
That's some pretty big fish. And supposedly there's shad in here. And occasionally you'll see these big fish busting on these shad coming out of this water. I'm headed over there to the reeds because the water's a little deeper over there. This is Tarn Stavis above the Bass Anglers. We're here at the Mystic Lake, Lower Mystic Lake. The skunk has continued pretty much from beginning of October till now. It is now pretty much mid-November. The skunk has continued. So we did notice that the fall bite did start a couple weeks ago. So here we are again, trying again. I'll see you soon. Okay, people, the skunk is over. Perfect hook set. The skunk is over. Ain't that right, Ed? Yep. <laughs> Bubba shouldn't have left so soon. Okay, spot number two. <laughs> Trying a different spot. Uh, there were a couple catches. Ed caught a couple bass. So I caught one. Bub didn't catch any, but we all had bites, but just not everybody caught a fish. And now we're at Swain's Pond. We're going to see what happens here. What a day. They use a piercing point. The piercing point is more like a spear and less like a knife. So it actually makes a nice, even hole. <laughs> Dude, do you want this shit recorded? I yeah, I'm here with Bubba Farmer. He just got his personal best, but we ain't even waiting ain't yet. Waited yet. Look at that know. stomach. We know. That's a pre spawner right there. Look at this mouth. Woo! Look at that. Absolutely beautiful. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, let's get her in the bag and wear. Absolutely. That is shit. Sure you got a pick with that. Dude. One frame. Come on. Okay, one frame. <laughs> this fish, you can't see it now, okay? But the bottom, all down here was soaked, and I didn't go in the water, okay? That's from 24 plus inches splashing all over the place oh and thrashing. God. You know, you're killing me. I have okay. been dying to Whatever. see a striper in the Mystic. Get ready. Thank you. We thought they were lies. I thought people were lying. Oh no, my dad catching. used to, my dad was telling me dudes were catching them all the time up there. I, I, I'm like, I yeah, right, know. Dad. Okay. I didn't believe the, exactly. Yeah. They're they're right. holdovers, I man. I didn't know. I thought they were lies. When they closed the locks. Okay, time out. Okay. Time, okay. You, okay? Forget that. <laughs> no one told me <laughs> stripers hit five inch green yum dingers. No one told me that. <laughs> it was a five inch watermelon. Yum dinger. Mm -hmm. I didn't know stripers hit that. <laughs> it ain't nothing else in the water. Apparently. Okay? All right, forget me now. We got video evidence. Okay. I'm videotaping it. Oh my God. Wow, oh that is God. huge, God. baby. They're damn. Oh my God. God. <gasps> Did it break? Yup, he snapped me off. I gotta try to get him back in the water. Okay, though. Okay, yeah. I'm hold it. It is huge because he has, oh, but you can't leave it in him. No, I'm not going to leave him in there. Oh, I might have to get wet. Okay. Hang on, buddy. We got you. Oh, my God. Hold this. Yes, just drop it. But he has the thing yeah, in his mouth. Yeah, they made a little rough though, so he'll be good. Woo! <laughs> Are you kidding me? Oh my god. Hey, guys! It's actually a good post card loss. The inside is the arch of the 
Park. Can't be doing this. We're not parking. We're not parking. We're stuck. We're, we're moving. I'm stuck, so I don't to you. See, I can't, I can't even get around you. I can't even get around you, guys. That's why people have mirrors and look behind them when they're rowing. Right. Not the cliff, because, okay, there's no room for you in the middle of this channel and the boat to go by you. Five or six rowers have passed us and saw us about 100 yards ahead. So you got to turn I'll around. Right in the middle. I can't pass you on that side and I can't pass you on this side. If you see us, you would go, you would go in the middle. Every rower that's passed us saw us 100 yards away. Every single one. Right, right we fish here all the time. You know what? I'm a champion rower. And we're champion fishermen. It has nothing to do with that. Man. You're not supposed to be here. I'm calling the Coast Guard on you. You call the Coast Guard. And we'll tell them how you're not watching where you're going. Call them. Grab your phone and call the Coast Guard. What you're doing is illegal. No, what you're doing is illegal. We're moving. I stopped moving at five feet a second. That's called trolling. Look it up. That's called trolling. Trolling. You just said right there. We're not We're not stopped. Trolling. Do you see an anchor down? You don't see an anchor down. The max do you? speed is six miles per you hour. You need to look where you're going. Watch Plain where you're going. Look license. where you're going next time. You There's so many license. people. Do you have your boating, boating license? You are the yes, only I one do. that. Let's see it. Certified. Look where you're going. We got a boating license, registration. Don't what else do you need? Don't Please go ignorant. enjoy your day. Yes, see an anchor Go down enjoy here. your We're day. Stop. Please go enjoy your day and keep on rowing. Every single rower saw us ahead of time. Uh, so goddamn uh, ignorant. And then veered off and passed us. You don't us. own the river. Call the Coast Guard. I asshole. got the whole conversation on video. Dumbass. to start with me. Okay, people. Big T? No, that's Big T. And the big catch. <laughs> We're catching sunfish with on Sankos now. With a trap tackle, three-odd hook. Trap tackle. He was hungry. Mm. <laughs> Sunfish. That's 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 what's up now. Isn't you it? saw me yet? I'm like, what do I got on my line? It's definitely <laughs> not a bass. It's zigzagging. I knew it was a bluegill, but I didn't think he got hooked. <laughs> and I see my line just running around. <laughs> got one of them suckers. We just got we just got a triple hookup. I wish we got it got it from the start, but here's mine. And Ed got his three different sizes. Three different sizes. Okay, all right. You gotta get water. I did. I did show yours. But you gotta show mine more, cause it's uh, another big one. And I just 10. beat you. I just matched your 10-day record. Oh, you ain't done. Oh my goodness. Are you kidding me? I we tripled I so wish up. We had that on camera. We tripled up. We come on. Tripled. <laughs> Oh boy. This is our little honey hole. Beaver dam honey hole. I'm ready to <laughs> We tripled up. <laughs> oh, that's just amazing. <laughs> I wish we had it on video. I wish we had it. That was. Oh, that was. That'll never happen again. <laughs> What we are looking at here is a genuine for Christ's sake moment. This is a front lash of epic proportions. <laughs> this is called a wind knot, people. You don't want to get it. It's not fun. It's not fun, is it, though?